In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we gather this morning, let us once again take a moment to call to mind our sin and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelations. I, John, heard a voice from heaven speak to me. Then the voice spoke to me and said, Go, take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went up to the angel and told him to give me the small scroll. He said to me, Take and swallow it. It will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will taste as sweet as honey. I took the small scroll from the angel's hand and swallowed it. In my mouth it was like sweet honey, but when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then someone said to me, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. The word of the Lord. How sweet to my taste is your promise. In the way of your decrees, I rejoice as much as in all riches. Yes, your decrees are, delight, are my delight. They are my counselors. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. How sweet to my palate are your promises, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. The joy of my heart they are. I gasp with open mouth in my yearning for your commands. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered the temple area and proceeded to drive out those who were selling things, saying to them, it is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And every day he was teaching in the temple area. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people, meanwhile, were seeking to put him to death, but they could find no way to accomplish their purpose, because all the people were hanging on his words. The Gospel of the Lord. So today is one of those moments where Jesus kind of loses it. Um, but, you know, people, people fail to realize that Jesus did get angry. And I think every time people get angry, they think there's sin involved in it. I think there is sin involved when it's a selfish anger, when you've got to have it your way. But that's not at all what he was angry about or, or right. It was, it's a righteous anger. 
he doesn't say, you know, you're selling things in the temple. He calls them thieves because that's kind of what they were doing. So these money changers and so forth, they would sell uh, animals, you know, doves and so forth, because every year the people had to come and make a sacrifice at the temple for their sins. And in order to do that, they would have to either bring an animal, which I guess if they were traveling a long way, they didn't do, or they would have to, obviously most of them bought their, whatever their sacrifice was going to be. And then of course the meat, the flesh from it was given to the poor and so forth. So there was, it wasn't like they killed all these animals and they didn't know what to do with them. I mean, they, they didn't make use of them. So they had to buy these animals. The only problem was in order to buy it, you had to take the Roman coin. And I probably told you this before, but you take the Roman coin and then you had to, you had to buy temple coins with your Roman money. So like an exchange rate, like if you went to a foreign country, you would buy another, another type of currency. We know the exchange rates are sometimes good for us and sometimes bad, you know, not great for us. But in this situation, they were always bad for the people because most everybody was cheating them. So um, when they would measure the gold, um, they would, you know, like the butcher would put his thumb on the weight and so on the, on the scale and so forth. So that's why he was upset. He wasn't upset because they were, because they were selling stuff. He was upset because they were cheating these poor people who had saved all year to get enough money to buy a turtle dove or two or whatever it was in order to, to have their sins wiped away because that's how they did it. They had the sacrifice was made and so their sins were wiped away. And so these poor people are saving all their money and you know they're coming in and cheating them so they can make more money. And of course the scribes and so forth, they all got a cut of this so they weren't happy about it. So what he was doing was a very righteous act. It, it, you know, no wonder he was upset. It's like when you get upset and you see injustice happening in the world, you get upset about that. You know, if, if, if you're getting upset about something that is, you know, totally circled around you, that's a little different story. Or if you blow up at something, that's a different story. But this was one of those situations where it was a righteous anger. And so I think that there are times where we beat ourselves up because we get angry, but oftentimes there's a real seed of justice that's involved in that. And so while there may be some selfishness in it, for the most part, if it's other focused, it's, it's a very different situation. But I think it, this does teach us another thing too, that even in our own hearts, you know, sometimes we need to get rid of the stuff that is that selfish piece. We have to make sure that what we're doing isn't totally focused on ourselves, but is obviously for the betterment of everybody. So I think it's an interesting story, and this really is the driving, the driving episode in, in both Mark and Matthew's and Luke's Gospels, I think it's in all three, um, where this is what drives the, the scribes and the Pharisees to, to try to find something to put Jesus to death. This is the thing that drives them at the very end. In John's Gospel, it's the raising of Lazarus. That's the last thing he does. But in this one, this is one of the last acts he does publicly. And this is the thing that really drives them to say, you know what, we got to get rid of this guy. Anyway, so just a little, little scripture lesson, but also a lesson for all of us to try to get rid of those things in our lives that, that have us flip out and be upset when it's totally focused on ourselves. Please stand. Let us approach the throne of the Father and offer him our prayers. We pray for our Pope. May the Lord guide and sustain him. Let us pray to the Lord. For all lawmakers, may God bless them with fortitude in their efforts to protect the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are mourning the loss of a loved one, may the Lord fill them with his presence and console them let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those in this community of faith discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, we remember especially all of our seminarians for our diocese. May God's grace and peace be with them always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for the faithfully departed, and today we remember especially Reggie Lennox Jr., for whom this Mass is being offered, that Reggie and all the dearly departed may be welcomed into the light of God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. And finally, for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Merciful Father, accept the prayers of our hearts and answer them according to your merciful will. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give thee thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Peter and Paul, St. Michael, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace
peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that she should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.